Welcome back everyone, Jake here. In this video, I'm going to logically prove to you that Russia cannot win this war of aggression against Ukraine, and to do this we're going to build an if-then proof statement. But first, as a matter of historical fact, let's talk about the Soviet-Afghan War. In December of 1979, the Soviet Union invaded and attempted to occupy the country of Afghanistan. They fought a war for 10 years, but eventually the Afghans kicked the Soviets out. And Afghanistan is a pretty tough country. Historically, the joke is, is that Afghanistan is where great empires go to die. Think the Persians, the Greeks, uh, the British, the Soviets, the Americans. And what was interesting about this war is that the Soviet Union actually wanted to invade Pakistan. One of the biggest weaknesses of the Soviet Empire was their lack of warm water ports, and their Black Sea and Baltic uh, Sea fleets had to sail through NATO-controlled waters to get out into the oceans. So the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan in order to get to Pakistan next because they wanted to have military ports in the Indian Ocean. So here is the serious question that I'm proposing to you guys. Who is a greater or stronger military force, Russia today in the year 2022, or the Soviet Empire in the year 1980? Now your first reaction would be, Jake, this is a nuclear war, nobody wins in a nuclear war. And yes, you're right, but if it was a nuclear contest, it would actually be no contest. Because in 1980, the Soviet Union had a nuclear stockpile of 30,000 weapons, and today, Russia only has 6,000 nuclear warheads. So, the Soviet Union would get the check mark in this contest, but we're assuming that it would not, be, would not become a nuclear war. So let's now talk about the metrics that creates a great military power, and having a large population to draw from is very important. So we're going to compare the metrics between Russia today and the Soviet Empire in 1980. And the Soviet Union in 1980 had a population of roughly 265 million people, and Russia today only has a population of 144. Their population peaked when the Soviet Empire collapsed, and in the last 30 years their population growth has been stagnant with their demographics rapidly aging. So in a contest of who has a larger population to draw from in order to conduct a war, the Soviet Union is getting the check mark. The next criteria would be strength and size of the economy. A larger economy has a greater capacity to wage war. And the Soviet Union in 1980 had a GDP of $933 billion. But we need to convert those dollars uh, due to inflation into today's numbers. So when we spit it into a calculator, roughly the GDP of the Soviet Union in today's dollars would have been 3.3 trillion. What is Russia's GDP as of 2020? It's probably gone down as a result of the war and sanctions, but their GDP as of 2020 was 1.4 trillion. So the Soviet Union in 1980 had an economy roughly twice the size in today's dollars compared to Russia. So the Soviet Union, once again, is getting that check mark. Next up is size of the military, and in 1980, the Soviet Union had an active duty military army of 3.9 million soldiers. Russia today only has an army of about 1 million active duty personnel. So the Soviet Empire in 1980 had a military size and force greater than four times of that of Russia today. So the Soviet Union is getting the check mark in this category. Next up is military allies. You don't really want to go to war unless you've got allies who's uh, got your back. And the Soviet Union in 1980 had most of Eastern Europe as its military ally. Think of East Germany, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, and Albania. However, who are Russia's allies today? And it's a who's who's of uh, terrible economies and human rights abusers. These aren't really the best military allies. 
Russia's really only military ally is Belarus, and uh, it's being led by this idiot. This is Lushenko, Lukashenko. And the first week of the war, he blew up uh, the top secret military map of Russia's invasion and broadcasted it live on, on national television. So he's not the brightest military ally. So in the contest of who has the better military alliance going to war with, uh, I think the Soviet Union with the Warsaw Pact clearly gets the check mark. Okay, so when it comes to population, economy, military, allies, who is the superior invading, superior attacking force? And I think it's no contest. It's obviously the Soviet Union from the year 1980 compared to Russia today. All right, so we uh, compared the two attackers. We now have to compare the defenders. Yes, this is where I'm going with this. So who is the better de defending force, defending military to protect their own country? Ukraine today in 2022 or Afghanistan in the year 1980? Let's go through all the same metrics once again. So we'll start with population. And the population of Ukraine today is 44 million people. Afghanistan in 1980, their population was roughly 13 million. So Ukraine today has a population roughly four times the size of Afghanistan when the Soviet Empire invaded them in 1980. So Ukraine is getting the check mark. Next up is size of the economy, the uh, ability to wage war industrially. And Ukraine's GDP currently is about 155 billion. This was obviously before the war. They've taken a hit as a result of the war. And Afghanistan's GDP in 1980 was only 3.6 billion. Let's go ahead and adjust that for today's dollars. This would get it up to roughly 12.7 billion. We'll be nice and round it up to 13. So, which country would you rather choose? or say has the advantage as a defender in war, when Ukraine is roughly 10, so 10 times the size of the economy of Afghanistan from 1980. Ukraine gets the check mark. Next up, size of the military and Ukraine's, let's say, active duty force prior to mobilization, prior to the, more, prior to the start of the war, was 200,000 active duty troops. We'll, we'll just not count the reservists. What was Afghanistan's standing army prior to the Soviet invasion? I kind of had a difficulty finding this number, but we'll be generous and round up and say about 50,000 soldiers. So prior to being attacked, prior to being invaded, Ukraine has the advantage with a uh, military size roughly four times that of Afghanistan from 1980. Ukraine gets the check mark. Next up, we have military allies, and uh, who does Ukraine have? These are all the signatories to a UN letter criticizing Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Many of these countries are also part of the NATO alliance, which also includes some of the wealthiest, uh, most militarily advanced countries in the world. Sweden and Finland also just joined NATO. NATO is actively supplying training, intelligence, and armaments in order for Ukraine to resist Russia's invasion. Who was Afghanistan's greatest military ally prior to the invasion by the Soviet Union? And it was actually the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was really the only country supplying the Afghanis training, intelligence, and military equipment. And then the Soviet Union basically just stabbed them in the back. Most of Afghanistan's uh, military at the time was stationed on the Pakistan border. So Afghanistan at the beginning of the war didn't really have any military allies to help it. Eventually, foreign intelligence services like the CIA came to the Afghanis' uh, aid. In addition, Pakistan, Iran, and Saudi Arabia also started supplying armaments to Afghanistan as they were feeling nervous about Soviet aggression in the Middle East. But eventually Afghanistan got the job done. But who would you rather go to war with? NATO or basically nobody? Uh, Ukraine gets the check mark in this respect. So once again, looking at population, economy, military size, and allies, Ukraine is the clear winner. So here is the logic puzzle that I have for you guys. 
if Afghanistan in 1980 was able to defeat the Soviet Union, and the Soviet Union was a greater military power, greater offensive attacker than Russia is today, and Ukraine is a greater military power, military defender than Afghanistan was 40 years ago, just think of it like a video game and you want to choose the characters with the best starting stats to give yourself an advantage. And we'll just think about it once again. Who is the better attacker between the Soviet Empire 40 years ago, Russia today, versus who is the better defender, who is more capable of withstanding an attack, Ukraine today or Afghanistan 40 years ago? So logically, explain to me how it's possible that Russia can inevitably win this war, this war of aggression, this war of occupation of a foreign country. My argument, of course, is that it's not possible. But Russia is going to do their best, and Russia has three strategies to ultimately win this war. The first strategy is depopulation. Russia is actively trying to kill as many civilians as possible or force them out as refugees, either bring them back to Russia or push them out to western Ukraine. Depopulation is, is deliberate by destroying every building, every piece of infrastructure. Russia doesn't care about the people, they only care about taking the land and the resources that are underneath that land. Decades from now, if they want to, they can repopulate this region with proper Russians. For those uh, people, Ukrainians, that do remain behind, Russia is intent on basically brainwashing them. The people remaining in Mariupol, they don't have running water or electricity, but they have TV trucks blasting Russian propaganda at them 24-7. And the message that Russia is sending to these Ukrainians is, you're not actually Ukrainian. You're Russian. You've always been Russia. Russian. Uh, you're currently in Russia. It's always been Russia. Ukraine never existed. Forget the last 30 years ever happened. And then finally, Russia is engaging in uh, blatant acts of terrorism. They're deliberately targeting, deliberately bombing schools, hospitals, churches, supermarkets, apartments. The goal by continuing this campaign of terror, bombing Lviv, bombing Kharkiv, bombing Kyiv, is they want the civilian population in the cities they never attend on, intend on taking to just give Russia what they want. That is the objective of terrorists, is I'm going to terrorize you until you just give me what I want. And of course, we know now that Russia wants a land bridge to Crimea. They want Kurzon and control of the canal that feeds water to Crimea. They want control of the Donbass region. But it's up to Ukraine. And how willing is Ukraine to endure heavy losses, endure suffering? It's their home, it's their country, it's their land. They have the advantage if they're just willing to continue the fight. So ultimately, it is up to the Ukrainians how long they want to carry on this resistance. For Afghanistan, it took 10 years, I hope. In this case, it doesn't take 10 years. And ultimately, the fastest way to end this war and return the global order to stability is to give Ukraine all the weapons they need to win this war today. Uh, the United States sent a little over a hundred of these 777 howitzers, but realistically, Ukraine needs a thousand of them. They need 900 more manufactured and delivered. So this is how uh, we can end this war, and Russia has to be driven out, and this can only be accomplished by supplying Ukraine with the weapons they need. But just in conclusion, I, I don't see how Russia can win this war when history and historical facts are against them. The Soviet Empire couldn't subdue Afghanistan 40 years ago. As long as Ukraine is willing to fight, Russia can't possibly win this war. Okay, that's all for this update video. If you guys found it interesting, give me a thumbs up. It really helps out with the channel. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care, be safe.